Have you seen all my Tootsie Roll? Mm hmm. They're not Tootsie Rolls. They're Willows. Playing this game gives me the cravings. Now, if you'll excuse me. Now, stop wheezing my Tootsie Rolls and clean up your mess. Seriously? I come here to record my show and tell everyone about the Cotton Reboot, and this is what I gotta deal with? And to top it off, you're playing in widescreen. So if you haven't guessed, this week it's all about cotton, and I'm excited. Ha! <laughs> when are you not excited? Quiet, you. In less than a month, the Cotton Reboot is out, and I'll bet it's not what you think it is. There's lots of ways to play the original game, whether emulated on PC, on the new Astro City Mini, or one of the ports on the PC Engine or the PlayStation. But what you may not know is that an already enhanced port with much improved graphics and design, as well as exclusive content, already exists for a Japanese computer called the Sharp X68000. And it's really good, considered by many the definitive version of the game, even better than the arcade. The upcoming reboot is based on this enhanced version of Cotton, and it will include the original Sharp 68000 version of the game, something that's a real headache to emulate. So for many of us, this reboot will be the first and only opportunity to not only get a full HD remake, but play the unique Sharp version of Cotton. Once you've seen how the different versions compare, I'll give you a preview and my thoughts on the Cotton Reboot based on all the early footage that we have so far. So hop on your broomstick and prepare for some fantastic night dreams, all for the sake of those sweet, tasty Tootsie Rolls. Let's go! Genre full of spaceships and alien threats, Cotton stormed the arcade scene in 1991 with a rare fantasy theme and a Halloween vibe. And while it may first strike you as a cute em up, it's certainly not the case. It mixes witches, fairies, and the occult with a surprising amount of gore for a game of its time, clearly influencing future games like Death Smiles that followed long after. Cotton gives off more of a Halloween vibe than the rainbows and unicorns of other cute-em-ups. Cotton's design strength is in its creativity, from a graveyard with zombies and flying heads, ending with a boss that may have inspired Jack Skellington, to a temple filled with Icarus-style archers, and a two-story sphinx. Every stage has variety to spare, and while future sequels up the ante with improved graphics, the original from 91 remains as charming as ever. It's got atmosphere and excellent music to groove to while sailing on your broom through six stages of hell. And hellish it is, as the arcade original of Cotton, Fantastic Night Dreams is no joke in the gameplay department. There's nothing cute about how the game will tear you a new one if you can't maintain your power level throughout the game, showing its roots as an arcade quarter muncher of the 90s. It's incredibly complex for a shooter of its time, mixing an experience-based power-up system with magic elements and projectile fairies to allow for several ways of playing. With just two buttons, you not only select between your base shot and special magic, but also unload bombs and send fairy options out to horde and destroy enemies. And the game clearly struck a chord as it was popular enough to see several ports across many consoles, along with spawning sequels and remakes across the PC Engine, Super Famicom, Saturn, PlayStation, and even the Neo Geo Pocket Color, and a very cool and rare version for the Sharp 68000 that was an improvement over the arcade with enhanced graphics and exclusive stage sections and bosses. The Sharp X68000 is a not well-known, Japan-only personal computer released in 1987, and it was actually quite a powerful system, very similar to arcade boards of the time, 
It even served as the development machine for Capcom CPS system games. So in this video, I'm comparing all the console versions of Cotton. Which ones are the best? Which one is the most faithful to the arcade? Which ones have unique features and remixed music? And which ones muck up the gameplay and should be avoided? And most importantly, I'll show you how cool and enhanced the Sharp 68000 version is, which is the one that'll finally be available to play for a wide audience this February in the new release. Unless you're an absolute purist for having everything identical to the arcade original, you'll find a ton to love about the Sharp port. Check out these various clips comparing the arcade original with the Sharp, and also PC Engine. You'll notice the PC Engine port is pretty faithful, with slightly downgraded graphics in certain areas, but a brighter color palette. And then the Sharp version, which completely redraws the sprites with more detail, more parallax in the backgrounds, and more detailed enemies. But the differences don't stop there. Much of the stages have been completely reworked, with new obstacles and elements across all the levels. And while a few effects have been taken away, like you see here on the Stage 1 boss and the missing bounce effect, overall the bosses are a step up from the arcade original. A great example is the Stage 3 Medusa boss, with the scrolling background. It feels a lot less static and more alive as you dodge its sword thrust while maneuvering around the spikes that shoot up from below. Stages 4 and 5 completely change things up with not only different stage layouts, but unique and exclusive bosses. Instead of battling the Sphinx, you get a high-speed battle with a segmented snake. And on the next stage, instead of the static plant beast, you get this weird Cyclopsian ape-like creature with some cool parallax and effects scrolling in the background. It would take a very long time to showcase every change and unique feature the Sharp version brings to the table, but from what you've already seen, it's significantly enhanced over the original. Another cool feature I just had to mention about the Sharp is they included a way for your RGB keyboard to flash to the music of the game as you play. Check out this clip of it in action, courtesy of my friend Shmups BR on his original system. I shudder to think what that would cost as part of a special edition package. You may be wondering why I haven't even mentioned the PlayStation port yet. And that's because, at least graphically, it's a straight-up port and near identical to the arcade. And while the music sounds a bit synthesized in comparison, the classic tunes are there and intact. But the differences are only skin deep and not what the internet would have you believe. In fact, it's the gameplay that, in my opinion, lets the port down. As I mentioned before, Cotton is a hard game. Whether the arcade, PC Engine, or Sharp Ports, it'll put you through your paces, trying to complete it. And this is where the faithfulness of the PS1 port falls apart. To be blunt, it feels like the game was nerfed. Enemies, mid-bosses, and even stage bosses all die far too quickly, without putting up much of a fight. Cotton has some tanky enemies, soaking up bullets before going down, but that's been removed here. This tree boss on stage 2 took me over a minute of firing away along with some magic to finally take down in the arcade. On the PS1, just a quick shot of magic and it's done before it can even spawn many enemies. Same goes for many of the bosses, dying way too quickly. I'm all for an entry level easy mode for any shmup and this port would make a great starter for a beginner. If one could just turn up the difficulty in the settings for the arcade experience, I'd be all for it. But on this port, that's not the case. Normal mode is already very easy, so I didn't bother trying easy mode. But I cranked it up to hard, figuring maybe that'll be like the arcade. And I was mistaken. Hard adds suicide bullets, making it a difficult but completely different experience. And to add insult to injury, the enemies are still weak including the bosses. They simply added extra suicide bullets and called it a day. Sorry, but this port doesn't get a pass with me. 
There's a lot of info floating around online that the PS1 port is a one-to-one -one of the arcade. Don't believe it. It looks and sounds the part well enough, but falls apart in the gameplay. If you've played the other versions and want any kind of challenge, you won't go back to this one. Compare that with the PC Engine port, which now goes for a very hefty price online, near $200 for the Japanese version and many times more expensive for the US Turbo Duo. And unlike the lazy PS1 port, the PC Engine version has all kinds of extra goodies that you can't find anywhere else. So overall, the graphics are about 90% versus the arcade. But the real kicker on this version are the incredible remixed music tracks. Now I'm not normally a fan of mucking with original compositions, but whenever I hear T's music mentioned, my reservations immediately fall away as everything they touched during those days turned to gold. And Cotton is no exception. Imagine taking the catchy Cotton tunes and turning them into a 90s rock ballad that sounds straight out of an ease game and you'll get an idea. That killer opening montage music was from the PC Engine version, and every one of these tracks absolutely rocks. Check out some samples of this incredible music. Pretty amazing, right? I get being a purist, and I would have loved if they included the option for original BGM here, making it perfect. But to be honest, I often come back to the PC Engine game simply to enjoy these awesome tracks again. If I was a groupie, I'd be banging on T's music dressing room door, backstage, screaming like a schoolgirl, waiting for him to emerge so I could grovel in his presence. To top it off, not only is the gameplay of this version spot on, but in my opinion, actually improved. The arcade original without auto fire is exceptionally brutal, with some bosses that soak up bullets endlessly, boss fights dragging on forever, and if you lose your power-ups deep into the game, you can forget about getting much further. It was designed to be a quarter muncher in every sense. The PC Engine port rebalances that difficulty by making bosses difficult without overstaying their welcome. The patterns in some cases are more difficult to avoid than the arcade, making them fun, but the bosses die in a reasonable amount of hits, making them less of a chore. 
Same can be said for many enemies, which also take a good bit of damage, but don't feel like they just refuse to die and overwhelm the screen. You only get three continues, and you can only continue once per stage, so there's plenty of challenge to be had. It's a thought out, balanced difficulty that I find to be just right. If the arcade is the overly vicious Papa Bear, and the PlayStation port is a weak little baby bear, the PC Engine port is the Mama Bear, and the bed you want to sleep in. What it gives up slightly in graphics, it makes up for an incredible music, voice acting, and a balanced gameplay difficulty. It's just an excellent port all around, and I can see why the game is in high demand. And yes, this version does have full voice acting for all the cutscenes in the Japanese release, as well as an English text option in the menu. The best of both worlds. Oh, and I forgot to mention the most unintentionally ridiculous, hilarious cry Cotton makes upon death on the PC Engine. It's like Curly from the Three Stooges getting miffed at being smacked across the head by Mo. Oh, well, I can't get enough of that sound. Not to be outdone, a custom mashup was also created by Dark City Productions with remixed music by The Hades, combining the arcade, PC Engine, and other versions and remastered audio into the cutscenes and <clears throat> other goodies. So the arcade original is a great game, but brutal without auto fire. The PC Engine port is excellent with some great features not found anywhere else. And the PS1 port is aesthetically accurate, as it should be for such a powerful console, but drops the ball on the gameplay, unless you're a baby bear looking to get your feet wet. And the Sharp version doesn't just tick all the boxes, but enhances the game significantly in just about every way. I've already shown you the graphics and upgrades, but the gameplay is no slouch either. It runs at a faster pace in some areas, with more going on at any one time, making the game a lot of fun to play. And the default difficulty is up there, between the PC Engine and the Arcade. But unlike the PS1 port, it gives you all sorts of difficulty levels to tweak to your heart's content. Aside from not having the remixed CD music of the PC Engine or the voices, it's the coolest version of them all, both graphically and in gameplay and not by a little. Unless you're a purist looking for the exact arcade experience, I can see most playing this enhanced version and enjoying it more than the original. And that brings us to the new release coming soon by Beat, where not only do you get the Sharp 68000 game, but an arranged HD remake in widescreen with redesigned graphics and additional characters to play with, as well as enhancements like new magic colors, power meters for bosses, and more yet to be discovered. The graphics work looks beautiful here, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they did with all the stages. The music is also getting an overhaul, with a myriad of composers coming back for the various stage tracks. I'll eat my socks if they can best the tease music tracks, but I think they'll stay true to the original while making improvements. Finally, they're also adding score attack modes, both a 2 and a 5 minute, so players can compete on the leaderboards. So is the new reboot worth buying? I certainly hope so. Given what we've seen so far, it looks incredibly promising, although until we get our hands on the final product to test, the actual gameplay and accuracy, nobody can say for sure. What I can promise is a comprehensive review once I can get my hands on it to let everyone know if the excitement is warranted, so look for a full review upon release. If you're already looking to pre-order, there's a few versions to be aware of. I personally got mine on Amazon Japan, as it's no hassle, and they always ship quickly and on time. The basic game is about 41 bucks, while the collector edition is about 68. It includes a box set with extras, artwork, a CD soundtrack, and of course, a teacup. But I gotta ask, what about a Tootsie Roll, I, I mean, Willow Candy? I mean, come on, can't miss that. You can also order them from Strictly Limited Games, although their special DX box set that includes an old 
X68000 style box is sold out. And of course, Play Asia has their version on sale as well. Whatever version it may be, if you want a special edition, you're about out of time to grab one. I've also read that it'll be available for download on Steam, so you have a myriad of ways to pick this one up. But that's why I'm making these videos, to show you really cool upcoming games that you may have blown off or not realized what it is that's coming out. It's not just an old cotton collection or a rehash, but a definitive Sharp 68000 version that's hard to emulate and play, along with a fully enhanced HD remake of the game. If that sounds like it's worth 40 bucks to you, head on over to one of the resellers and get in on that pre-order. Or if you want to wait for my full review, look for it soon as the game releases, and I can get my hands on it. Until then, grab a handful of Tootsie Roll, er, Willow, and stuff your face while playing one of the other cool versions you just saw to tide you over until February. Just don't do it in my game room with my candy and leave a mess laying around, unless you plan on bringing an offering in return. I don't know, say, an X68000 so we can watch the lights dance around. I don't like Tootsie Rolls anyway, they get stuck in your teeth. They're willows! Stupid crack addicted. Dang it!